Representative Marcel for a question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me just say I was under the impression that we were here to primarily hear from the victims, families, and what they, what they were feeling about uh, not being able to get the drug to carry out the death penalty. And let me say that uh, my heart goes out to each and every family and me myself uh, went through something similar with my brother being killed and my other brother was in the car and was being shot at at the same time. So it was attempted murder and murder. Uh, that young man is serving a life sentence. Uh, so I've sat in your shoes. I raised my brother as my son. Uh, so I, I certainly know how it feels to be in the victim's family. I know what it feels like for my father who has lost his son. However, I, I think that the hearing today, it's, it's gotten a little twisted for me other than just hearing from the victim's family. And it seems to be more about blaming someone for not being able to, to uh, attain the phenobarbital or, or whatever the, uh, whatever we choose to use to carry out the execution. Uh, capital punishment is, and I think I heard somebody talk about it a little bit, I think Sinkfield, is special circumstances when the person is under 12 or over 65 or a law enforcement officer have killed multiple people. But it doesn't change the fact that someone died like my brother. So now my brother's killer has a life sentence. And he's serving that sentence. And they shot at my other brother. So what I'm saying is I understand that the death penalty has certain criteria in order to even be considered the death penalty. But that doesn't make our families hurt any less because we've lost a loved one. That's A. I heard um, uh, Jeff Landry talk about the convenience, the convenient excuse of the governor. I just totally disagree with that because it's not an excuse when there is a suit that is filed in 2011 and is still in the court system. I don't believe that any of us elected officials can go above when something is already going through the court system and we have the ability to wait and see what that what ends up happening with that particular suit. Um, also, I, I do know that under Jindal's administration, there was a stay under Jindal's administration. This didn't happen when Governor Edwards took office. This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It's a problem with the way the law is set up. And yes, the appellate process is lengthy for the death penalty and people have appeals and that's set forth in the law. I don't think the governor has control over that process. I don't think that uh, we should be pointing the fingers at him. Let's try to find a solution for the problems for the victims and not point fingers at the governor per se or the legislature for that matter. If there is a solution that someone has where we can change the law then let's look at that solution. But let's not talk about uh, it's somebody's fault when the same thing happened under Jindal and we had a hearing before and I don't think I heard anything from uh, Mr. Landry during that hearing. I don't think you put in a card, red or green of information or anything else. So, and, and today, I, I think it was important that we heard from uh, the victim's family. Uh, but we, we, we have hearings during uh, our sessions, and I'm sure we'll have some more. And there will be some people pro and con. And I think it's important when we have these hearings that we have a balance of people being able to speak on both sides. 
And I don't think we've had that here today. Thank you very much. Okay, Representative James. Was it, Mr. Chairman, was that a question directed to the Attorney General for clarification? Or? I, I don't think she had a, okay. a, a question, right. but I think Representative James may. Be sure. For you, Mr. Attorney General, you have time. Uh, All the time. <laughs> Rep Representative Marcel uh, mentioned the state. And, uh, you know, to, to the, the families, um, there's nothing that I could say to, to <clears throat> take away um, the, the pain that you feel. Um, I've been on this committee and we debated this bill and I've heard from families that have similar stories as Representative Marcel who've gone through the same tragedy that you guys have um, but feel opposite about the death penalty. Um, and from the, the vantage point where I sit, I have to evaluate both your stories and theirs and I can't just arbitrarily pick a side because your stories are horrible. Professor Getty, I, when, when I heard the story, I, I remembered it from your class. Um, but as I sit here, I have to think about the stories that I hear on both sides. Um, but what we do owe you guys is the truth. And after, after two hours, I heard a lot of things. It was almost hard for me to keep up my notes on things that just aren't true. Uh, one of the things that Representative Marcel, she mentioned this day, uh, Mr. Attorney General, your office filed a motion that didn't oppose to extend this day. So I want to know what it, Liz Murrow, wasn't she with your office? Yeah. She, yeah. she, she filed this motion that's in my hand, and it's unopposed motion to continue the status conference and extend the stay. So correct. while, while you, you mentioned a lot about the governor and the legislature um, and about being silent, um, but, but your office has, has played a part and I played a part because your office, your name is on it. You what? signed a motion to extend the stay. So what, what's changed besides the obvious that it's an election year? Absolutely nothing has changed. Uh, if you would follow the chronology of what you have in front of you, what you would find is that when we took over, when I became the attorney general uh, and we got a solicitor general, we started looking through the particular cases. We recognized the issues that were before the court. And we also recognized that there were solutions to avoiding the litigation and getting the executions back on track. And so what we had was an agreement with the Department of Corrections, who is underneath the oversight of the governor, uh, to work on one of those solutions. And so our office, and again, we explain this to the victims' families, the difference is we communicate with them, we tell them what we're doing and why we're doing it, and we said, look, give us a year to come up with a solution in order to get the uh, executions back in line. And the Department of Corrections agreed with us, agreed with Ms. Muro, that they would work on those particular solutions. At that time, we gave them those solutions. Then, in a darker night, the governor's office through the Department of Corrections decided to again ask for a stay. They didn't come to us and say, look, we want to stay this again. They did this without consulting us. It was at that time that I sent this letter. I know you should have gotten a copy. I have a couple of copies. Be more than happy. Uh, you're a pretty astute attorney. Under which we spelled out the changes that could be made administratively, Representative James, and that if the governor so choose, chose not to do so, that then offered the legislature the opportunity to change the law to receive so that these victims' families would receive the justice. The problem is that the law is the law. And while this, this body has debated whether or not the law should remain the law, it is currently the law. And so the question is, is that either the governor has the ability to administratively fix it, the governors in Texas, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Tennessee, West Virginia have found solutions to this without having to come before this body. It's evident that the governor has remained silent. The question is, are you going to remain silent? The, well, the, the, the unfortunate thing about what you said, you don't get to ask questions today. I get to ask questions. Well, I, so my, my question to you is, when you had the case, what aggressive moves did your office take to some, come to some type of resolution? Don't mention the we, governor. We went to He's the, not we here. Went to the hold Department on, I'm not, of Corrections. Hold on. Give me, we gentlemen, the, gentlemen, hold up. Gentlemen, Representative James asked you I, a question. I know I only have five minutes. He had about 30. Let's, so let me James, get my five minutes in. Representative you, James asked you a question. You. So what let aggressive me. actions has your office taken to address this issue? Again, Legislatively, in the courts, what? Again, 
the, the aggressive actions that we've taken is to put before the Department of Corrections the easiest possible remedy to fix this. Upon hearing silence from them, we have again put before the, the governor the opportunity to bring up legislation. It is his Department of Corrections that must carry out the executions. It is not the Attorney General's responsibility under the law to carry the executions out. But we have provided the solutions to the Department of Corrections in order to get the executions back moving. Another Though, question. Dur during the debates on this bill, um, I've, I've been here, you haven't. What what has changed that, that you're now here? Because we haven't heard from you, like Representative Marcel, many times we've debated this issue. You, you've been the one silent. So no, what, what has changed? changed? What has changed is that the governor went into court without, the, without conferring with the attorney general and decided to, again, stay the executions. That's what has changed. That changed after the session, Representative James. And in, in that time, I received phone calls from the victims' families. And you know what? I said, you know what? I asked and then received calls from other legislators saying, what are we going to do? What do we need to do? And so therefore, we sit here today explaining to you all what can be done. If you want a solution, we have one. I, I, well, I've been here for two and a half hours and I haven't heard one solution. All I've heard is, and even in your comments, outside of my, my learning professor, Professor Getty, that's probably the best hire you've made since you've been there. Uh, <laughs> we haven't heard a single. Your Our job in the legislature, we bring the bills. It's not the governor's responsibility. So, like, if you want to be the governor, run. Like, leave him out of it. The legislature, we present bills. You've presented a package of bills every year since I've been here, have you not? The answer is yes, yeah. you have. You have not presented a single bill on this issue. So, because if we're talking about being silent, like, your office has been negligent in addressing the same issues that you're here to complain about today. I disagree with you, Mr. Uh, uh, James. Mr. James, because... In fact, what we've done is sought out the most expedient solution to this problem. We've taken the path of least resistance and found that we've met up with resistance. We, we hold this hearing today to educate the legislature that, there, that if an administrative fix is not going to happen, then we stand ready to work with the legislature to make a legislative fix. This The letter that I sent to the governor with a draft with, with uh, draft legislation went to every member of this legislative body. And while you write, I'm not the governor, I don't wish to run for governor, I'm running for attorney general to uphold the rule of law. I'm also not a legislator. I can't file a bill. You can present but a I package. Sent, like I, I, cannot even, I cannot even present a bill. I can, I can give you examples of legislative solutions, you can of do which the, I have done on July 24, 2018. Let's, let's move on. You, you talked about other alternative measures. You, you support hanging? You said that in the paper. You support hanging? What I have stated. It's a yes or no. Do you support I hanging? Stated, I only have five minutes. Let him answer, Representative James. What I have stated is that the law, the death penalty that is on the books must be carried out. The method by which it should be used is debatable by this very body. That's your decision, not mine. If that's what you determine the method is, I will work to uphold that law. Okay, that's what so, I do. All right, so when the article that I read in your statement, so am I to believe that article or am I to believe your statements today that you don't support firing squad, you don't support hanging? I'm trying to understand as the attorney general, the duly elected attorney general, what is your your stance? Because this is the first time I had an opportunity to ask you questions. So since you're here, I want to know whether I'm, if I'm to believe what you say on Twitter or what you say today. So what alternative methods do you support? Of course, you evidently are not listening and just want to you ask haven't the answered questions. the question. German, I just German, answered the question well, in that I support the rule of law and that if the legislature spells out, whether it be by firing squad, hanging, lethal injection, or gas, if that is the will of this body, then I would support that. That has been my comments and it has been consistent. Okay. On on the drug issue, um, you, you should ask. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a, I'll ask it. You've talked about the compounding drugs, right, as, as one of the methods that you support. Um, I know that if and when the law, if the law changes, there will be a, a company that one of these compounding pharmacies that will 
potentially get a contract. I want to know from you on the record. Um, last year, you received a lot of contributions from these these compounded pharmacies. Um, Scott Simons of Stella Pharmacy, Professional Arts Pharmacy, Mills Medical Elite. I want to know on the record um, that none of these compounding pharmacies that have contributed to you will get the contract to actually administer or, or provide that compounding drug if and when the law well, changes. I don't, I don't think you would decide that. No, well, exactly. Uh, it's that. evident that Mr. James has not read my letter. And the fact that the, didn't is, is, is that the state penitentiary at Angola is it has a hospital and a licensed pharmacist under which that pharmacy at the state penitentiary can compound the drug. So I, I know of no reason why we would have to contract outside of the state of the state system in order to get the drugs. Unfortunately, because of the agenda, we're not going to be able to hear from the DOC to, to provide some, some type of information to combat some of a lot of what you said because they weren't invited here. Hopefully, they'll, they'll come in a session when we have a, a true hearing and not a pep rally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, gentlemen, um, we're all people at the panel and attorney general is elected official elected by the state and i respect both representative james and the attorney general and and um debate is healthy so let's let's remember that representative james is going to ask a question i was going to ask so i'm gonna let him ask and this is going to be it thank, thank you mr chairman professor get you you talked about uh your work with the law institute and one of the things uh we know that the uh, the appeals process is another one of those instances where families continually have to relive uh, what's going on there at the law institute any discussion about proposed changes to the appeals process you know it for death penalty yes but you know anything regarding you know Not this appeals, type of but post conviction, post -conviction. So we're in the process right now we just finished uh, rewriting the laws on post conviction uh, for other crimes and that's I'm pretty sure it's going to be before the legislature this session um, and we are now in the process literally month to month in the process of really writing the PCR law for the death penalty so probably, and, and we probably won't see anything this year maybe next session on that no okay. it won't come this year it'll come, it'll, but it will be up should be up for next session um, and I wanted to mention too related to that um, is that another thing in terms of the the length of time representative Cruz that it takes the Fed Congress has recognized the length of time and in the anti-terrorism and death penalty act back in 2004 they passed a number of changes that reduced the amount of time uh, that it took to go from the state system into the federal system and the amount of time it takes within the federal system um, and I personally am seeing with our Supreme Court um, when they take up those cases that are at that level finally um, that you really have to have an extremely persuasive argument as to why they should even hear it and they're turning those cases down so much that in my experience and opinion I'm seeing that the defendants are taking more of the cases directly from the state Supreme Court to the U.S. Supreme Court rather than going back through the habeas and when well, they go back through post-conviction but then they go straight up to the court on the issues rather than bringing it back through habeas because it's taking time and it's not working um, and so hopefully I mean we're seeing decreases in time with EDPA stepping in or being enacted and that should continue even more so just fingers crossed because I say all the time there's a problem with the death penalty it's in that it's taking 15 to 20 years to to execute the people that are convicted thank you you good okay there are no more questions in the queue